what's the point of applying for credit when no lender is giving it to someone like me with no prior history? I have a good amount of money saved, stable income, and have never been late paying rent or any of my utilities. I know about FICO Ultra Score and Experian Boost, which claim to help people like me, but none of the lenders recognize those alternative scoring models. This Catch-22 narrative is such a cliche. It's been almost two years now, and I'm done. Let's go over three options for people struggling to rebuild or who are just starting out in their credit journey. I'm Cap, and welcome to Screaming Lincoln's Consumer Credit Series. First, get your name out there. Applying for credit or even going to optoutprescreen.com will get the job done. This isn't an option for establishing a credit history. Instead, it ensures what activity you do have will track correctly to your records with the credit bureaus and many other consumer agencies. Mistakes are common, so it's important to monitor your credit history regardless if there is any prior history or not. Credit fraud is very common. Many banks and credit unions already offer either free credit scores or credit monitoring. Discover will provide a FICO score and credit monitoring for free, even to non-Discover customers. It's all monitored through Experian. The downside is Discover won't cover Equifax or TransUnion. Signing up for Credit Karma or Credit Sesame will cover Equifax and TransUnion. There are additional pros and cons to every credit monitoring service, which I'll cover in a separate video. Oh wow, I'm sure I rushed applications here and there along the way. Is it really important? I mean, my social security number is included with the application, so it'll all tie together and should work out, won't it? The important part? is to get your name out there and make sure it is correct. I'm not just talking about identity theft or fraud. I'm referring to simple mistakes like misspells in your name or using a nickname instead of your proper name, not checking your phone number if you're the type of person that changes their number often. Keep tabs on this information. One excellent source is annualcreditreport.com which now provides free weekly reports without scores from all three bureaus until April 2021. This free weekly service is beneficial to everyone because it allows you to see your full history as a lender would, provided you have any existing credit history. One common argument against using annualcreditreport.com is if someone has never applied for credit. Go ahead and check anyways, because you'd be surprised which entities, like the ones shown here, will input your information to other consumer agency databases. The information from these other consumer agencies is used to generate credit files on consumers with no prior history. Check the header info in your credit report for misspells in the name, address, phone numbers, and so on. Do not skip this important first step. Otherwise, you may keep getting denied or requiring a manual review because your information isn't consistent in your credit file with your information submitted in an application for a loan or credit card. This is why so many people get that awful, sorry, we need more time to review your application, blah, blah. Oh no, now I know I rushed some applications because I can remember seeing that same message. Okay, I can see your point. What next? Now that your info is verified with each credit bureau, let's discuss what can be the easiest and potentially most beneficial option to get your credit off to a fast start. Becoming an authorized user or piggybacking onto the right credit card can send your credit score soaring well above 700. I have a video that goes over all the criteria to be aware of when being added to someone else's card as an authorized user. Again, do not overlook the first step in getting your name and other info appearing in your credit history correctly. Being added to a close friend or relative's card that you've never lived with or used as a billing address 
is the most common mistake for those consumers looking to piggyback to cheat their way to an excellent credit score. Many lenders do not require a social security number when being added as an authorized user. So how is your information from the authorized user card supposed to carry over to your credit file when there can be thousands of people with the exact same name and even matching date of birth as you? If you have any questions on piggybacking, see my video on becoming an authorized user or hit me up in the comments anytime. It's been decades since FICO was implemented by lenders to evaluate consumer credit. But piggybacking is still a great option to hack your way to an excellent score and will likely continue to be for years to come. Oh, great. If only I knew someone with great credit and that would allow me to piggyback off of. Next. If you have no one to piggyback onto for credit, you'll have to schlep your way to a good score. You will get there but it will take time. Oh, awesome. I love taking the long way. By the way, let me just say how fair this whole credit system is here in the good old US of A. It makes zero sense when you see drops in scores because you paid off balances to zero. Now your score dips and you don't get the best rates or possibly denied for paying off your balances. Okay, back to you, Cap. It's not about fair. It's about leveraging what you know and using what you have. There's been tons of research showing low-income households don't have great credit scores. So it's only logical that young people in lower-income households will not be able to take advantage of piggybacking their way to an excellent score. Understand, you don't need everything to be perfect when it comes to credit, especially in the beginning of your credit journey. With regards to piggybacking, all it really takes is just one card with the right conditions for it to work. Plenty of people with the poor score may have one or two cards that qualify to send your score soaring. Again, it comes down to leveraging what you know and what you have. Once you're up and running with a good score from piggybacking, you can pivot to opening accounts in your name as a primary account holder then sever ties to the authorized user account now that your journey is off and running. Getting back to your scenario, I know what you're talking about when it comes to paying balances to zero. This often occurs with installment accounts or loans. Once a loan is paid off, it is closed. With closed accounts, the effect on scores is usually lower. I'll have a video going over this scenario because if you're not familiar with how FICO calculates scores, I agree, it makes no sense. Meh, I'm just venting. It's still BS, but thanks for hearing me out. Proceed, sir. Option two involves applying for an installment account, which is a loan. But not just any loan because most loans will require a fair to excellent score to get approved. I'm referring to credit builder loans. They're offered for the same reason as their name, to help build credit. Not every lender offers credit builder loans, but one easy online option is Self, formerly called Self Lender. I have a video that goes over all the things to look for with credit builder loans, which includes a review of using Self as an easy online option to get started. It will cost a little money to get started with credit builder loans, but the amount is very small, often less than $4 a month when costs are averaged out over most of the term plans offered by self. Not bad. I can manage a few bucks a month. Anything else? The final option in getting started with credit involves applying for the right revolving account or credit card. Two of the most popular options include Capital One's Platinum Card, and Discover's IT Secured Card. How come I see so many sites that suggest other cards? Some of these other cards have to be okay, right? Some may be suitable. Always review the terms as many have annual fees. Read reviews on some of those credit cards because some of those lenders use predatory practices once things go wrong, like missing your payment due date by one day. But why are you suggesting just these two cards? 
I see a whole bunch of others listed on different sites. What's going on here? Again, review the terms of each card and read the reviews. Also, be aware that many of these free, helpful sites run on commissions they receive for people like you that come to their site for information and end up clicking a link to apply for a card listed on their site. It's not a perfect system, but can be beneficial. Be wary of sites that have lots of links, sorting features, and list cards by type. At first glance, it appears the credit site really has their act together and has done all the work for you by allowing you to cherry pick what you feel is best for you. But some of these sites don't always list every suitable card and may only promote the cards that offer the best commission rates via their affiliate links. I cannot say this enough. Read the terms and reviews of any card you see on sites like these before applying. Go the extra mile and look up the card online for more information. Reddit forums and Doctor of Credit are great for additional info on credit cards. Based on my research, these two cards are always at the top of my list if I were starting out. Just two? You can always try the bank you have an existing relationship with. Checking and savings accounts can help especially with someone like you who has cash in reserves. Banks see this information and factor it into their credit evaluation models, which go beyond a FICO credit score. Use that information to your advantage by leveraging it to induce a credit approval. In the event you're denied, walk into your bank and inform a banker you're rethinking your existing relationship and may sever ties to move to another bank nearby that is offering you credit. You'd be surprised how far the right approach can go in this situation. Good to know. Any other tips? I strategically laid out this narrative in order from easiest to hardest. Get your credit file in order by signing up for any of these services to monitor all three credit bureaus. Then, your first option is piggybacking by asking relatives and loved ones if they have a card that doesn't get used that you can help manage. You never know until you ask. Second, open a credit builder loan. You don't need a credit history or even income to open one online through self-lender. As an advanced tip, wait until the credit builder loan is in its last couple months before it's paid down when you apply for your first credit card. This reflects low credit utilization for the credit builder loan and will be judged more favorably with a higher credit score. Lastly, getting a credit card in your name is the trifecta because once you do, you're in control of your own credit destiny and not relying on piggybacking on someone else. With time, you'll be on your way to a much better credit score and more lucrative credit rewards and much more favorable terms on car loans, student loans, and home loans, to name a few. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments anytime. What are you waiting for? Hit it, Steve.